Well, hey, friends, this is Jennifer, and this is The Jennifer Allwood Show, the podcast for women who want to find freedom in both their life and in their business. I own a multi seven figure a year coaching business. I'm also a certified life coach. So I have the honor of helping thousands of women every single month make money in the online space and help them to get unstuck from whatever is holding them back, all without sacrificing their faith or their family. In this show, you're going to get the very best life and business advice, always with a healthy dose of Jesus. So buckle in, my friend. I'm so so excited that you are here. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Jennifer. And I'm going to be podcasting today about podcasting. That's right. I'm going to podcast about podcast. All right, listen, there are so many people who need to be doing a podcast who aren't. I was actually um, in conversation with an internet friend of mine. Do any of you have like real life friends and internet friends? So an internet friend of mine, um, person that's in ministry that has tons and tons and tons of content, like on YouTube, on Instagram, um, but they don't have a podcast. And I was like, why aren't you doing a podcast? And they're like, it's on my schedule. Um, You know, something I've been meaning to do. And I'm like, okay, well get it onto your schedule for next year because listen, there are some of you listening right now that maybe you've thought about a podcast. Um, maybe you've, um, you know, toyed with the idea. Maybe you, uh, you've been a writer and it didn't even occur to you that you actually might enjoy podcasting. And I want to give you just some things to like mull over. Okay. And I want to give you some things to mull over, um, uh, just to kind of roll around with and things but not as a way just for you to continue rolling over, but for you to kind of decide, I just said rolling over, but to decide if you're actually going to do a podcast in 2023. All right. Cause there's some do's and don'ts. There's some reasons you should start a podcast in 2023 and some reasons that you shouldn't. But if in fact you have a message within you that the world needs and you are able to conversate or communicate or tell stories in a way that people can learn from, um, and you need another way of meeting people Instead of just social media, which many of us are very frustrated with, a podcast is a really great thing for you to consider, okay? If you're listening right now and you're like, nope, I am out, O-U-T, out, Jen, listen, just sit and listen anyway. You might learn something. It might just inspire an idea, Um, but I want to give you like three reasons why you might want to start a podcast, okay? All right, you ready? Um, Okay, so first of all, let me just say this having a podcast right now is kind of like having a business card. So if you can remember back 15 years ago when every business, um, oh, I wish you guys were watching me on YouTube right now. The dog, the dog is needing petted. (laughs) The dog is needy. But do you remember like 15 years ago when everybody had business cards? And it's funny because I had business cards, but I was like, oh, I don't want like traditional business cards. So I did like a trifold brochure. Um, And so, and then, you know, then it was like your website is your business card. Still is. All right. And then you hear people saying, if you write a book, that's like your business card. Okay. Perhaps also. And, but the newest business card is a podcast. There's something that happens when you tell people that you have a podcast. They're, they 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 think about what it is that you do for work just slightly differently. And I don't care if you're like in the health and wellness space, if you're in the coaching space, if you're an author, because many people can write, not everybody can talk. Can I say that again? Many people can write, but not everybody can talk. Let me just go one step further. I'm going to give you a little news flash. <laughs> Many people can hire a ghostwriter to write for them. Ooh, did she say that? She said that. Many people can hire somebody to write for them. All those books you see um, in Barnes and Noble on Amazon, do you think every one of those authors wrote every word themselves? No, many of them had a ghostwriter write it for them. So let me just say many people can put out books, but not everybody can talk in a way that people will listen and in a way that people will pay attention and in a way that people will continue to come back to. Okay. So let me just say that. So I do believe that starting a podcast is kind of like, you know, the 2022 way of having a business card. So let's talk about three reasons that you should start a podcast. You ready? Okay. Number one, seed planting, seed planting. I talk about this with all of my clients. Don't start a podcast for making money. It's not a money maker. It's a lead generator. Okay. Let me say that again. Podcasting should not be started as a way to make money. It should be started as a way to generate leads. And if you're like, wait, what? Okay. So I know you guys know that I teach about eight different ways you can make money in online space. This is what my better way program is. If you're like, wait, eight different ways of making money. Yep. You can go to jenniferallwood.com slash quiz. 
jenniferallwood.com slash quiz and take a really cute, really fast quiz on what are some different revenue streams that you should be doing to make money with your business. Okay. Podcasting is not one of them. It's not, I teach eight different ways. Podcasting is not one of them because literally the only way you can make a lot of money at a podcast is if you have a huge, um, you know, amount of downloads happening and subscribers and you have advertisers who are willing to a advertise on your platform and b they're a good fit for you. But that means lots and lots of downloads. That means big audience. And it's also usually not in the beginning, big dollars. It really isn't. I mean, I, I make virtually no money off of my podcast because I use it to generate leads. Okay. What do you mean, Jen? All right, listen, I want you to think of your podcast as seed ground. I want you to think about your podcast as a way for you to connect with people in a way that will plant the seed of them wanting to buy from you later. Okay. Let me say that again. Some of you, I'll say it a different way. Some of you are listening to my podcast right now. And because I deliver value on my podcast, the seed has been planted. Gosh, I want to get into Jen's mastermind one day. Dang, I want to take that better way program from her. It's a seed planter. It's a way to remind people that you have a product line. It's a way to remind people that you do coaching. It's a way to remind people you have a marriage course that they can sign up for. It's a way to remind people you have a crafting, uh, you know, business or whatever. Think of your podcast as seed planting. Okay. It's lead generating. It's seed planting. It really is not a moneymaker usually. We're getting ready to hit 5 million downloads and still making virtually no dollars. And let me just say this. We have tried running some ads on my podcast before with like ad agencies, but it always felt out of integrity to me because it would be like, we want you to advertise these supplements. Well, I haven't taken those supplements. I I don't want to actually like, tell you about supplements I haven't taken before. That feels like a big fat lie. I'm telling you how great it makes me feel. No, it doesn't. I've never put that thing in my mouth. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. Or underwear commercials. I mean, yeah, no, this is a a PG podcast. I'm not doing advertising Hanes underwear. Like, so it just never felt like a good fit for me. So I've just, I've let it just like go ahead and settle in my brain. I am using my podcast as lead generation. I ask people to share my podcast with their friends and their family and anybody else that needs business advice from a biblical perspective, but I really am not trying to monetize it. Would I like to down the road? Well, of course, right? I'd add to love another, I'd I'd, I'd add to love. I'd love to add another revenue stream, but that is not what my intention is right now. And if you've never started a podcast before, you need to just use it in the beginning as a lead generator and a seed planting. Okay. Number two. Um, this is the number two reason why you should start a podcast. Okay. Um, your ideal client could definitely be listening. Okay. The demographic for people that listen to podcasts versus people who don't is very different. By and large, if you look at statistics, people that listen to podcasts have a higher level of completed education. Um, podcast listeners a lot of times have college educations, which means they value um, paying for things like education. So if you're like, I teach people how to get out of debt, great. You want people that you know have a perhaps a higher level of education because they've already invested in education, so they're already used to putting money out for that, which is great for you, right? Um, also, people who listen to podcasts generally their median household income is higher than people who do not listen to podcasts. In other words, if their median income is higher, perhaps you hope that also their discretionary income, the income that they have that they're able to just spend on anything is also higher. Therefore, they would be more likely to buy whatever it is that you're selling, whether it's a product, a course, a group, or what have you. The people who listen to podcasts generally are not on social media as much. These are people who value deep thinking usually in a, and um, are more studious. You know, they, they're book readers. They're people who are, um, they're paying attention to different things. Now, do I have a podcast? Yes. Do I listen to podcasts? Yes. Do I also play on social media all day? I sure do. Okay. So these aren't like hard and fast rules, but here's what I'm saying. If you have something for sale and the thing that you have for sale is um, 
you know, if there's any weight to the price. Okay. So you're not selling 1499 earrings. You want to do a podcast because it puts you in front of a demographic of people that usually has the ability to pay for things in a different way than people who are just on social media. In addition, um, you don't have a lot of older people who listen to podcasts who are a little more hesitant to spend in the online space. So like my mom, for instance, I don't think my mom listens to my podcast. That's fine. My dad said to me a few years ago, honey, I hear you have a radio show. Oh, it's actually a podcast, but that's, okay. you know, they're not, they're not podcast listeners. That generation, my parents are both over 70. They're not by and large podcast listeners. Now, if you're 70 and you are listening to this podcast, God bless you. I am so glad. The closer I get to 70, the younger that sounds. Okay. But I'm just saying that as a general rule, um, that generation is a little slower to take out their debit cards anyway and spend online. Just it's a trust issue. Um, and so that, and that's usually not your demographic, right? So usually your listeners are going to be in a younger demographic, that 30 to 60 age range. And those are the people usually that are able to take out a debit card more readily than a younger clientele or a much older clientele. So your ideal client possibly is a podcast listener. That's another reason. So number reason, number one is it's seed planning. It's lead generating. Reason number two is your ideal client could be a podcast listener. Give them a podcast. Okay. Reason number three, it just adds to your legitimacy. All right. So as more and more people get into this online space game, as more and more people figure out how to get out of the traditional nine to five and work for themselves, as more and more people open up their own businesses in the last two years, because they don't want to work for someone anymore. They believe that the security they once felt by getting a paycheck from somebody else is uh, they've listened to my podcast and they know that it's just perceived security. It's not really any more secure at all. And they want to set their own course. They want to create something for their own family. They want to change their family's trajectory. They want to do business. If that's you, let me just tell you that having a podcast is just another way for you to add to the legitimacy that will separate you from your competitors, okay? In addition, so a podcast and a book, either one is great, but a book costs so much more money, you guys. The, the amount of money, the cost of entry into podcasting is very low. It's very low. You need a podcast mic. I use a Yeti Blue. You can go to Jennifer Allwood. Amazon store, just Google Jennifer Allwood, Amazon store, go under my business tools, my Yeti mic right there. My cute little bling, bling, bling podcast wrap, I believe is also in my Amazon store. Then you've got to, you know, buy like, uh, you got to sign up for like the podcast hosting. We use Libsyn. Then you're going to need somebody to edit your podcast unless you're savvy enough to do that. I have somebody that edits my podcast. He's very reasonable. And then he uploads it to Libsyn, which pushes it out to all the different platforms, uh, to Apple, to Spotify, all the places, and bada boom, bada bing, it just turns up on the internet. It's like having a business card in the year 2022. Another reason that it adds to your legitimacy is this. One of the struggles that business owners are having right now is how do I grow my following, get more people on my email list, get more followers on social media without paying for ads? Because in case you haven't ran a Facebook ad lately, it is outrageous. Mark Zuckerberg, if you're listening, outrageous. Outrageous. I've got so many thoughts on that. And so... You do not have to pay to play, okay? First of all, quit speaking that over your business. You don't have to pay to play. You do not have to run Facebook ads, but you do either have to put out stellar content that is shareable, that people um, want to be a part of, that is super fun to look at or videos that you can watch. So you either have to be good at that or you need to figure out how you can leverage other people's platforms um, by getting on those platforms so that hopefully you can gain some more followers and email subscribers organically without paying for ads. So. The win-win is if you have a podcast, you get invited to be on other people's podcasts, OPPs, more often because people are like, oh, Jen has a podcast. Gosh, she has, you know, 400 episodes on here. She has 2,000 reviews. She has 5 million downloads. I bet she would be a good guest for me. So then you get invited to be on as a guest with other people's podcasts. So then you're introduced to their audience at no cost. 
You go blow their socks off. You communicate well. You serve them to the best of your ability. You ask if I could possibly give them a freebie. While I'm there, then you give them a freebie and then they get on your email list and it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Point number one was it's great for lead generation. Point number two is your ideal client could be listening. Point number three just adds to your legitimacy. It just really does. So if all things are equal and you've got a podcast, but your competitors don't, totally different. Totally different. All right. And, and the other thing is, I mean, I have a book too, right? And I love writing Fears Out the Boss of You. I loved, um, you know, publishing the Get Unstuck and Stay Unstuck. I love that. I have an ebook for prayers for business people. I have a traditional book and then I have a gift book. So I have three different kinds of books. So I've done the books. The podcast is so much easier to sustain because I do, you know, two episodes that are less than 10 minutes or 15 minutes long every single week. This one might've went a little bit longer and um, it's new. It's fresh all the time. Um, I don't have to pay, you know, for books to be printed, shipped, any of those things. So if you have considered starting a podcast, I just really want to encourage you to not only just consider it, but just to put a date on your calendar for 2023, like literally figure out, I am going to actually start a podcast in quarter one. And then I want you to work things backwards. Okay. What's that going to take? You need the name of a podcast. You need to find somebody to help you create the graphics that's going to go on like iTunes and Spotify. You need to get um, a podcast mic. You need to find somebody that's going to be able to edit the podcast for you. Um, You need to figure out what you're going to name it. You need to figure out which podcast episodes you're going to come out with right out of the gate. You need to figure out how often are you going to podcast? What can people expect from you? But I really encourage you to do it. It is a great way to just really practice your communication skills, to really hone in on your messaging, to really find a different clientele or get in front of your ideal clientele, um, to generate leads for your sales, and to just add to the legitimacy of your business, which a lot of you really need. All right. So listen, if this is right up your alley, if you love hearing of other ways that you can expand your business, I am doing one more three-day workshop before we end 2022 and roll into 2023. Um, It is December 6th through the 8th. We start at 10 a.m. every day. It's a three-day workshop. If you've never been in one of my workshops before, listen, it's $10. It's $10. If you have not gotten into one of my workshops, please do. You will get back 10 times that in value. If you learn anything from my podcast, which I use as a seed planter, by the way, get into one of my workshops. What do you possibly have to lose? You have, you have spent $10 in way worse ways. Am I right? Am I right? So you can go sign up at jenniferallwood.com slash workshop. Once again, that's jenniferallwood.com workshop, but go sign up for a three-day workshop as we end out 2022. We're going to be talking about things that you can do to be growing your business in 2023, ways that you can work smarter and not harder for the love. Stop with your 10, 12, and 16 hour day. Being the busiest person that people know, there's no honor in that friends. There is no honor in that. I want to teach you how to work less and make more. So go get my workshop, jenniferallwood.com slash workshop. I want you to find a date on the calendar. You're going to start a podcast. I want you to commit to that for 2023. Okie dokie. All right, friends. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Friend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast again this week. I'm so honored that you come back for every episode and that you share the Jennifer Allwood Show with your friends and family. Every time I see you guys post about it on Instagram or Facebook or something, it just makes me do a little happy. So thank you. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast if you never want to miss an episode. So you can go to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify or any of the other podcasting places and subscribe each week so that every week you get the new episode when it releases. So just know that I love bringing you relevant content. I love bringing you great guests. And one of the ways you can help us here at Team Allwood is by leaving the podcast a review. So if you have just a second to do that, would you go over and leave a review for the Jennifer Allwood Show? Thank you again. You're amazing. I'm honored to be here. Until next week. Bye-bye.